Can you dig it, suckers? How you doing, fight fans? EJ Boxing Live here. Another Wednesday night prediction hangout with some of the best guys here on YouTube. We have Gus making his debut here on, on, um, on EJ's Boxing uh, from the Boxing Voice. We also have Nauta. You know, Nauta knows all the lightweights. And we've got Miguel. Miguel's been dying to come over so we can have a great hangout. And we're going to start in with some of the biggest fights Coming this weekend, Kelbrook versus Kevin Bizier for the IBF uh, Welterweight Championship scheduled for 12 rounds. Uh, Kelbrook resume, um, he's got a pretty good resume, but the only notable name to me is that uh, is obviously Sean Porter. But I like the Shishenko win and the Carson Jones fights, they were pretty good. Matthew Hatton, you know, Love on Do was good, you know, that's a pretty good win. He's got Michael Jennings as well. And um, his, re his record, is, as it stands at the minute, is 35 wins with 24 knockouts. He's uh, 29 years of age, stands at 5 foot 9. Uh, he's from Sheffield, um, born in Yorkshire. That's in Yorkshire, sorry. And um, Bizier, Kevin Bizier, like, I don't know too much about And this is the whole point of the prediction. Because sometimes, like, someone like Kevin Bizier, Sullivan Barrera, like, yeah, what are we going to win? But this is when upsets happen when we just take an eye off the ball. So Kevin Bizier's record is 25 wins with 70 knockouts. So he's pretty fairly good dig. Five stands at five foot nine. His name is Kelbrook. He's 31 years of age. So, but um, he's on his record, man. I'm looking into his record mode right here. He's got a uh, Giuseppe Lari, Lari, Giuseppe Lari. I remember Matthew Hatton beat him. Not Matthew. Ricky Hatton beat him. I remember uh, Junior Witter beat him. He's got Nate Campbell on his resume as well. And anyone else? That's about it, man. Joe, That's about Joe, Joe Dam as well. I think he fought him twice. Joe Joe Dan? Where is he? Yeah. Yeah, he fought, he fought Joe Joe Dan. Joe Joe yeah. Dan. Okay. Yeah, 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 I see, I see, I see. Yeah. But that, other than that, he ain't got no one else. So this is a big step off for him. The last time he lost was in 2014. And since then, he got wrapped up two wins. So this is his big break, man. He's also, he's from... um. Oh, he's, uh, he's from Canadian. Canada. Well, I think he's Canada, yeah, he's from Canada. Quebec, Canada. So we'll see. Um, I'm going to go with Kel Brook. Kel Brook has looked tremendous hitting the pads with his trainer this weekend. I see it on Eye for London. Check that out. Um, Coogan Cassius and uh, Jamie Helder on that channel. And uh, they got the media workout today. It was actually yesterday, sorry, because they were in the UK. And uh, he, looked, he looked impressive, man. He looked very impressive. So uh, I haven't really seen Kevin Bizier. I'm going by stoppage. I'm going eight round stoppage. I'm done. Uh, let's go to Nata. Nata, how do you see the fight there? Oh man, I got I got Kelbrook easy. I think he stops. Uh, I think he stops uh, Bizier probably within about three or four rounds, man. Because Bizier to me is no better than Jojo Dan. Uh, Brook <laughs> Brook Brook stopped Jojo Dan at four, and he probably could have stopped him earlier than that if he really wanted to. Right. I think Brook is probably going to look to show out and uh, you know show off that he's, you know, his claim to be the best of, of the welterweights, regardless of the resume. You know, he's just going to try and show it on the eye test by blowing uh, Bizier out the water. Cool. So I got early, early stoppage. Early stoppage. All right, cool. Uh, let's go to uh, Miguel. Yeah, I got no doubt. Uh, Pale Brook winning by uh, about three round stoppage. Three uh, round. That guy, BDA, uh, what's the name trainer training that guy, right? Uh, David Lemieux trainer? I thought I saw him doing, doing bad work, right? Yeah, you're right, yeah. Yeah, I've seen that. Okay, yeah, I got Kell Brook. Easy. <laughs> yeah, gosh. Easy. Early three round stoppage by Miguel. Impressive. Gus, give us, give us your take, my man. Yeah, you know, I mean, a lot of criticism to, you know, towards Kel Brook, but people got to realise, and I mean, BCA is mandatory, is the um, IBF rank number one. You know the IBF, if you don't fight your mandatory, they'll strip you of your yeah, title. Strip you. He, yeah, he's, 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 what, what can he do? You know, I mean, if he's got to negotiate a big fight in the summer, and this is a make or break fight, he's got he's to win, he's got to be extremely impressive if he wants to uh, take on some of the bigger dogs or even jump up. So, I think... Brooke, it's interesting he's fighting somebody the same height because he's physically quite an imposing uh, welterweight. So, but he's he's not only is he big, he's strong. He can get the body. He can he fights very very good mid range. I'd say within five, probably yeah, f I'd say a knockout five. Mhm. Mm well, 
Well, well, everyone's predicting knockouts on the, on the panel, so we have to see, man. You guys listening in the chat, uh, leave your prediction in the side here. Yeah? Like, like, it's quite quiet this week, I don't know why. But um, we'll see how that fight goes on, man. Also on the card, Luke, Luke Campbell versus Gary Sykes. Uh, 12 round, the light with Now, um, Kevin, um, sorry, Luke Campbell, his last fight, he lost to the French guy. And I'll tell you what, yeah, I was at the press conference the whole week, and no one gave that the, the French guy. They just normally thought Lucas is going to win this fight. And he got beat and stopped. So coming that he's getting trained by um, by Rigo, Guillermo Rigano's trainer, the Cuban guy who actually trained Miguel Cotto before. So yeah, maybe that's, yeah, so maybe this might help him. It might be so against Gary Sykes. Let me bring Gary Sykes' record up because I don't know too much about Gary Sykes, man. He also much. trained Rusin Chagayev, didn't he, recently? Uh, Rigendell's really? trainer. Yeah, he's a, he gets around, man. He's a good trainer. He was doing pretty well with Cotto. I still like me to go from Cotto. So Gary, uh, Gary Sykes, uh, his last loss was in 2012 to Terry Flanagan. So he's been around the block a bit. Um, so to, uh, that was Gary Bolden. Right, yeah? yeah, yeah, yeah. Gary, yeah. but lost to Gary Blackley twice, uh, and lost to Terry Flanagan, and his last fight with Liam Welsh show. But he, in these fights, he's lost. Um, against uh, Gary Button the first time he got stopped, and the second one went to points. So he's been quite durable. The last time he'd been stopped in 2014 against Joe uh, Craig, I don't know who else, with the vacant BBC uh, super featherweight. So he's, he's, he's fought a featherweight, man. He's fought a featherweight to lightweight. I, I don't know if this guy... He's got a good fit match. He's got what? He's got a. He's got a, He's actually got a good resume. You know, Liam Walsh is a. I rate him as an up and coming potential champion at lightweight. Very, very good. So, if he's fought Flanagan and he's fought Walsh, then then definitely he's got good pedigree coming into this fight. Split, 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 split decision with him in 2012, but that was quite some time ago. And um, yeah. 2014, right? He's had one fight. Now he's had one in 2015 and one fight. So he's 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 not been active. So he's not really been active in this point. I think, you know, Campbell's active. Just come off a loss. I think Campbell will win this fight. I think I've got Campbell by points. Um, 12 round, nice decision uh, for Campbell. Uh, go ahead, Gus. Give your take on that one. Yeah, this is this is a very dangerous fight, I feel, for Luke Campbell. You know, extremely highly rated uh, prospect. You know, Olympic gold medalist at London 2012. Southpaw. He's pretty much got everything. Very, very big at weight as well, he can definitely move up two weights, no problem. Um, yeah, no doubt he's he's looking to obviously, you know, rejuvenate his career. But but uh, Gary Sykes is a difficult opponent, I think. Um, oh, could it be a potential upset again? Two on the <laughs> top of really? it. You think so? Ooh. Call it, call it, call it. You got to call it. Put it out there, man. Yeah, why not? I'm gonna, I'm gonna flip the script. Why not? You know, I'd go for, I'll go for Sykes out pointing him. Wow, that's big, man. But you know what? It's possible, man. If, if he, yeah. if it's possible. It's very possible. So you he would, he would have had very, very good sparring with, you know, the Rigondeaux camp and that. So, as well as he, he's past a little bit of worry about his sort of a little bit of rustness as well, not sort of being out for a year. But I think he's, I think he's a decent fighter in the. And the new sort of custodianship with the new trainers and that, yeah, why not? Well, he's six foot three, man. So he's the tall guy for the weight, man. He's pretty tall, yeah. guy, man. See, what's the kind of with the USA guys saying? No, so how do you see this fight, man? Um, I I'd go with uh, Campbell close. Sykes does look like he has a pretty good resume. I mean, he's he's only lost to pretty top-notch opponents. Yeah. And I mean, he this this is a potential trap, I guess, for Luke Campbell. I think with Campbell, since he lost his last fight. This isn't really necessarily a step back, but a sidestep. Nah, no, not at all. So, yeah. So, so I'd say, and it's for the vacant Commonwealth title. So, I mean, the, this guy has to be, you know, at least fairly pretty well be, ranked, because yeah. it seems like the the it seems like the the Commonwealth and the BBBFC and all that stuff. You know, the rankings tend to be pretty solid as far as um, you know, when it when it comes to vacant titles, when it comes to the number one versus number two and stuff like that. So, Sykes should be a, pr- a pretty pretty uh fair opponent. Um, but I think Campbell should probably still be able to, to get him. I think he should be able to still um, get a, a close decision uh, over over somebody like a Sykes. But um, who knows? I mean, uh, th- this guy may be rejuvenated after the layoff, or he may be rusty after the layoff, and then Campbell may be able to take advantage of that and stop him. But I- I'd go with the safe bet as Campbell by a, 
a fairly close decision. Well, what do you think of him as a, as a, as a sort of a contender in, in, in the sort of lightweight division? Now, you know, mm. I mean, he's, as I said, he's, he's very highly regarded in the UK. He's got a, I mean, he's got a great amateur pedigree, touted as a future world champion, but lightweight for me is the toughest division out of all of them at the moment. Well, the thing about Luke Campbell is, um, the funny thing is, didn't he, uh, wasn't he a bantamweight in the, in the amateurs? I'm not too sure of it. I'm pretty sure he was, because that's why, that's why, I mean, he was extremely tall for that weight class, as it was. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm looking it up right now. He, he won the gold he, medal. He won the a silver medalist. He won a silver in the Worlds and gold in the Olympics, but gold in the Olympics was definitely lightweight, no? No, it was at Bantam. It was at Bantam? Yeah, it was at, it was at 125. Okay. So, wow. I mean... <laughs> yeah, and see, and that was with the same day win. So, to me, that says that Luke Campbell was basically kind of benefiting from the fact that he, he was taller and naturally bigger than a lot of the guys in the amateurs. Yeah. Um, now, see, in the pros, of course, you know, you got to go 12 rounds as opposed to going three. So, if you're going to be draining yourself, you, you're not going to be able to have the stamina to go 12. So, you're probably going to have to be moving up. So, that's most likely why he's at lightweight now as a pro. But at the same time, you also give up that um, that height and weight advantage relative your, to your opposition. So, I mean, as you see with Gary Sykes, even though Sykes isn't a particularly tall, lightweight, um, he's five foot eight. You know, he's yeah. only an inch shorter than than Campbell. So, whereas Campbell probably had a three or four inch advantage over most of his amateur opponents, he only maybe has a one or two inch advantage over his pro opponents. So, I think that that makes a big difference for him, especially for somebody like him who, from his for his style, he he tends to like you know to kind of pot shot and move a little bit and, you know, yeah. set up power shots. He's trying to set up, you know, one one shot knockout type power shots. And if you're not able to get out of the way quickly enough with a with a taller opponent, um, you know, that could that could spell a little bit of doom and gloom for you, especially if you're more of a finesse guy on the inside and not necessarily a strong guy. Because he doesn't really strike me as a physically strong guy on the inside, so he could probably be bullied no. a little bit. And I think that's pretty much the way Mendy was able to defeat him in his last fight. He was he got bullied a little bit on the inside. So I think um, that that could be rough for Campbell. You know, even though he probably has the frame to go up a weight, another weight class or two, he may not have the overall strength to compete with the elite fighters at those weight classes. And and Sykes, he likes to fight on the inside as well, despite being a tall man. So yeah, yeah. So that's that could be tough for him. All right, cool. Well, I made a mistake on. Um talk about the height, so I was looking at another fight, actually. I was looking at another fight, so yeah, it's five for eight. All right, Miguel, uh, what's your take? Yeah, a side, which is a what, Luke Campbell, right? Yeah. Favorite, okay. yeah. I don't know much about him, you know. I know a little bit more about Luke Campbell, I've seen him in the past, but not the opponent. Yeah, I'll take Luke Campbell. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe about the season on that one. Hey, 